Aloha and good morning. I'm James McRae from the University of Toronto. I'll be presenting Flat Fit Fab Interactive Modeling with Planar Sections. My co authors are Nobuyuki Umitani of the University of Tokyo and Karin Singh of the University of Toronto. Planar sections can be used to create interesting geometric structures with many different uses, and many examples of them can be seen throughout the world. The applications are numerous, from architecture, art and sculptures, to design and manufacturing, for instance, furniture in the home or other interior decorations. Planar sections can even be used for volumetric data visualization. Our previous paper, Slices, a shape proxy based on planar sections, was the first to explore whether and how people could create meaningful, minimalist abstractions of objects using planar sections. Our studies revealed that users' choice of planes were highly consistent. Further, we were able to correlate users' planes with geometric features of surfaces and learn the relative importance of each. Finally, we created an automatic algorithm capable of producing planar section models of similar quality given a surface as input. But some objects we want to create cannot be produced by taking slices of an input surface either because the surface does not exist, or more importantly, that there's no surface that satisfies the arrangement of sections. There's a spectrum, in fact. Some objects, like the fish on the left, do not conform to an input surface. The runner at center conforms partially, and the ant on the right was created completely by taking slices from an input surface. Our work presented today addresses the need for a system to interactively create planar section structures. The flat fit fab system contains a novel interaction method which is consistent between workflows, numerous operations for planar section modeling, real-time physical feedback, and fabrication tests to ensure that models, once physically made, are suitable as real objects. Our work spans four different topics, shape, shape abstraction, interactive design, physical feasibility, and fabrication. To begin, we ran an exploratory study where six users created both reference and freeform objects. They did this by sketching onto a user-controlled planar canvas. As users created 3D sketches during this study, using either a single or multi-view interface, we recorded the input strokes, their duration, the configuration of the planar canvas, and its orientation relative to the view direction during sketching. Analysis of the study results led to a set of four design principles for our interactive system. First, we found that users overwhelmingly preferred a single view interface. Second, we found that most input strokes were drawn onto a canvas viewed near front to parallel. Third, an analysis of the global pairwise configuration of planes revealed they are predominantly parallel or perpendicular to one another, informing us of the importance of shape regularity. And finally, we recognize the importance of design collateral. That is, the system should support as input the inspirational reference materials the designer has, such as images and surfaces. Our system supports the creation of planar sections using a single stroke-based gesture. The first step is to define the slit or line of intersection with a new planar section. The next step is a constrained rotation and translation which moves both cursor and view into position to define the new planar section contour. For additional control, the cursor first exits a dead zone, allowing the user to define where the contour will begin. And finally, the section contour is drawn and optionally the contour is made locally symmetric about the slit axis. This interaction enforces the first three of our design principles. Interaction takes place within a single viewport. The controlled rotation sets a near frontal parallel view, and orthogonality and local symmetry strongly enforce shape regularity. Design collateral, such as images and surfaces, can be imported to aid creation. Here we show in dark green a guide curve generated for an input surface. During sketching, the planar section contour snaps to the guide curve when close, but the user is free to deviate from it, for example to create convexities or concavities. A problem with using surfaces as design collateral is that the geometry may be non-planar. As shown here, 
The non-planar silhouette contour shown in green more effectively captures the shape of the man than the planar contour shown in red. Instead of using a non-planar contour, however, we locally deform the input surface and then take a planar contour with the deformed surface. This planar contour more effectively captures the shape's silhouette viewed along the plane's normal direction. We call such deformations magnetic cuts. Details of the deformation are included in the paper. Our system includes a set of procedural modeling operations with parameters that can be adjusted in real time. These operations further address the need for shape regularity and make creation easier and more fun. The linear operation shown here creates regularly spaced planar sections. And in addition, the user may scale generated sections based on the length of each cross section of the base planar section. Here the base planar section is the spine of the fish. This leads to aesthetically pleasing variation, and in this case lets us quickly create the rib cage for our fish. The revolve operation creates duplicates along the contour of a base planar section. The base planar section is treated as the root of a tree, and the entire branch of planar sections is duplicated along it. As shown here, the branch consists of the leg and the attached spikes. The blend operation can be used to create intermediate duplicates that smoothly blend between two planar sections attached to a base planar section. In this case, the base planar section is the spine of the dinosaur, and the sections to blend are the vertebrae and ribs that are found along it. The branching operation duplicates the entire tree of planar sections, overriding existing branches connected to the root. The result is that the tree grows deeper by one each level or each time the operation is used. Here we show the interactive creation of a tree structure consisting of about a thousand planar sections. A large planar section may have dimensions which exceed those of the material to be used for fabrication. In this case, the grid operation can be used to partition a large planar section into smaller sections. Small planar sections which act as links are added to connect the adjacent sections automatically. Radial operations modify the shape of a contour. Circles, stars, gear shapes, and other contour shapes can be defined using this operation. Radial arrangements of holes for a section can also be generated. We performed physical experiments with acrylic sheets to observe fracture patterns, which guided our approach to its simulation. Trying different slit lengths and directions of force, we found that when fractures occurred, the patterns consistently followed along the slit direction. Our physical simulation approach works in real time to identify cross sections along planar sections where fractures are likely to occur. Potential fractures are visualized as bands colored from blue to red indicating 20 to 100 percent of the maximum stress being applied. External weights can also be applied and interactively manipulated on the model as shown. The physical simulation approach consists of two steps. The first step is interplane analysis, where we compute the forces distributed between planar sections, incorporating the internal mass of sections, external weights, ground contact forces, and the slit or joint connections. The second step, intraplane analysis, or within plane analysis, uses the joint and contact constraint forces to compute bending moments along regularly sampled cross sections, where each section is modeled as the bending of a beam. 
If the section modulus, which is the ratio of bending moment to the maximum stress, exceeds the threshold, a fracture is predicted. Uh, much further details and additional references are provided in the paper. We performed the water glass experiment shown here to determine if predictions were consistent with reality. We found that the weak three- and four-legged designs, shown with clear acrylic, fractured as predicted, and the stronger three- and four-legged designs, shown with the blue acrylic, supported the weight of a full water glass. Using a reference image of the Vitruvian Man as our design collateral, we also created the Da Vinci-inspired cutlery holder. The cutlery was weighed, and we interactively added these weights to our digital model. As predicted, the physical creation supported the weight of the cutlery. To ensure the fabricated model would function as intended, additional tests are integrated in our system. The first is the stability tests, which ensures that a model will stand freely. This is done by testing if the center of mass projected onto the ground plane falls within the convex hull of contact points, as shown. The second is an assembly test, which ensures that sections can slide together. This is done by finding section cycles without parallel lines of intersection, shown red here. The last test is a connectivity test, which ensures that every section is connected to at least one other. Our system packs the 2D contours for each planar section into a single rectangle which serves as input to a printer or device which cuts planar materials. Our system also automatically computes the slits to be cut into connected sections. Finally, our system can numerically label pairs of connected slits, which can be either printed or etched onto each fabricated section. To evaluate the usability of our system, we ran multiple studies. The first evaluation was at a nearby high school. 38 students amongst three design classes used the software for a week and completed a questionnaire. Students generally responded positively and especially liked the procedural modeling operations, making frequent use of them as shown on the right. A second study at the University of Toronto consisted of 12 undergraduate students who were provided a 15-minute instruction video. We show some of the results on the right, which reportedly took between 15 and 30 minutes to complete. In our last study, we put the software into the hands of an experienced artist, and we show a collection of these results on the right. To conclude, we've introduced Flat Fit Fab, a comprehensive system which addresses the interactive creation of planar section structures. We presented a unique single-stroke method to create planar sections, a collection of procedural modeling operations which cater to planar section modeling, a novel approach to the physical simulation of planar section structures to reveal fracture locations and which allows also for interactive refinement. And finally, we include stability, assembly, and connectivity tests and the automatic generation of slits cut into each section, which all aid the process of fabrication. We'll be demoing our software this evening, so please come check it out. Or you can try our software, which is freely available online at flatfab.com renamed from Flat Fit Fab to Flat Fab because it's less of a tongue twister. And our Flat Fab software is currently in beta form and under active development. Thank you very much for your attention.